Joe in real life. So yeah, yesterday I kind of felt like shit and had a bad workout. And you know, it's weird. I should just confess this right off the rip. I recently posted a video and it got like a thousand views and it made me nervous. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Like, I never get nervous making these. I, I, if you're new to the channel, I post these every day and I just turn it on and I rant. And I was nervous yesterday. Um, the idea that a thousand people watched a video, which I realized by YouTube metrics is not that many. But it's still like it, it rattled me inside in my little boy heart. I got a little self-conscious. And um, that's silly. Uh, so if you're new to the channel, welcome. And, you know, this is how it goes. Basically, I'm a middle-aged white guy who does some pretty underwhelming workouts. But I do them every single day. Every single day. No days off. Uh, the last time I took a day off, I relapsed on alcohol. I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> it was almost a year ago. And I took three days off. And before that, I had almost a 200-day streak. I like to work out every day. That's, ba that's, that's my thesis statement, you know? I work out for enjoyment. I work out for longevity. And I work out for mental health maintenance. And really, those are my top three priorities. I guess number four, I guess I'm officially going to say it, my number four priority is performance. But if I'm honest, if I'm fearlessly, truly honest, I don't give a shit about performance. I don't give a shit at all. In fact, mental health might have to be bumped up that list. Like, my mental health is maintained and stabilized with exercise. Um, and I don't need any, like, um, studies to support that claim. Like, that's just true. I discovered this cure. I say cure because it's not really a cure by accident. And um, it's more a coping skill than a cure. It's more something that buys me a little time so that I can do something that'll actually help me, right? That's what a coping mechanism is, right? And that's what exercise does for me. Um, it buys me a little time. I'm not always great at utilizing that reprieve, but more, I, I get more hits than misses. Maybe I should say that. And yeah, this is just a basic summary of what I do here. Uh, today, I'm gonna do my minimums. And I think that's it. It's really rainy. We have a flood warning in Savannah, Georgia. I think we're going to have one hell of a hurricane season. Um, and I got to go to work. Today's typically my day off, but I got the last two days off because of storm damage. So I got to go to work today. And I got to replace everything in the kitchen that they threw out when the power went out. <laughs> it's going to be a hell of a day. But hey, I'll show you my minimums. You want to see my minimums? All right, let's get to it. See you soon. So I don't fully grasp what happened to my video here, but maybe in some ways it worked out for the better. I, my plan was to film the entire workout and then speed it up and just kind of voice over that. But my video cut out like in the very beginning and gave me some problems thereafter. I did manage to string some footage together. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Just glitchy, I guess. Perhaps humidity. Who's to say? Anyway, what we got here is my base. Well, I, first I did a mobility and warm-up. And now I'm just ramping up 10 pounds at a time. I'm starting with the bar. Doing a little goofball stretch with a kettlebell. That might just look like a pseudo uh, wide-legged forward fold, but what I'm actually doing is taking a stance slightly wider than shoulder width, and I'm pressing the outsides of my legs away from each other, trying to lift the arch on both sides, getting that tension in the hip on both sides. And what you'll find is when you fold, especially with a little load in that position, it really gets behind the knee uh, especially the outside behind the knee which is an area where I need some pretty serious work and activation um, this was a good workout 
I was definitely feeling a little wobbly on my old stumps, but I have run the last couple days. I've done a couple, I strung a couple three and four mile runs together, ran in the rain through my graveyard. That was pretty cool. I enjoyed that a lot. And so yeah, okay. Yeah, that's so weird that that happened. But now we're jumping. This is 145. So I'll do 145 and then 155. Huh. I'm wondering what happened with my uh with my camera. I don't understand why that would do that. As you can probably tell, I'm not overly tech savvy. I'm using my phone to film this stuff. And I mean, I'll be the first to admit, I don't really understand how my phone works. <laughs> like, um, and I'm not interested in getting a computer science degree so that I can like winnow these things. But um, I use some free film editing software and I just use the camera on my phone and it's way better than anything the audiovisual department of my high school or college uh, ever had for their gear. So, so we live in, uh, we live in some crazy times, that's for sure. I got a cat yelling at me on the road. I'm out walking my cul-de-sac as I film this. Basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit 155 for one. And then I think I drop it to 115, although it really should have been 120. And I'll do two sets of five and we'll stop there. Um... This in and of itself is not a very strenuous workout, but the plan is to do it or something adjacent to it structure-wise every single day. No days off, you know? And what I'm trying to figure out right now is if two sets of five is recoverable. Two sets of five every day, that would put it at 14 sets a week, uh, 28, 56 a month. So quite a lot of sets actually. And with no real step back, well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I'll be able to adapt to that, but I'm excited to find out. And that speaks to the topic that we touched on before. You know, I don't need the plan to be successful in order for me to feel like I got something out of it. In fact, more often than not, when a plan is successful, the only thing I can think about is how I left something on the table, how I should have done more, you know, whereas a failure, a failure is demoralizing in terms of your ego but it's exhilarating in terms of like, well, there's a creative aspect to it. And some might argue it's a negative creative aspect. And well, okay, I mean, maybe that's true. But perhaps then the delight that you get in that is a perverse delight, right? Um, if that's true, it doesn't feel that way to me. I feel, I feel what, really inspired when I, I create a plan that I think should work and that it fails abysmally, you know? Like, I like that feeling because then I get to reconnoiter. I get to step back up into the position armed with new knowledge or at least with the intent to ferret out what that new knowledge might be. Those are the good days for me, you know? <sighs> These sets of five were rough. Um, they shouldn't have been. But, like I said, the running's been tough. And really, I should have said that earlier. I actually think two sets of five is adaptable, especially even for a man my age. Um, but with the running, that's what I'm not sure about. Uh, and uh, the running's really interesting because the primary movers for the squad, or in this case, the front squad, aren't really messed with but little weird things start happening like my ankles start collapsing I can't hold my brace um, I have this pelvic tilt that I can't get under control you know it's a it's a really weird kind of 
disassociation with the body in that like last night while my run was very easy and very enjoyable the heat was broken and it was nice and cool i got a good four miles in at a good pace um this morning when i went to squat i couldn't find my position and i wasn't fatigued i wasn't sore uh, i was no more tired than normal but i couldn't line up you know and like i never have knee pain um I, that's not a humble brag it's just my mechanics don't lead me to knee pain i get ankle pain i occasionally get hip pain but my knees never hurt but today the inside of my right knee had this suspicious twang it's not pain in the proper sense like uh like a sensation I don't know how to describe because I've maybe never felt it before. It didn't hurt, but it didn't feel like that's how my knee's supposed to work either. You know? <laughs> um, so I guess we put that in a pain category, right? I mean, we'd have to. Um, I'm walking. I just took, I took a lap around my cul-de-sac while voicing this over and I'm walking on it and it, it's causing me no problems at all but I know it's there, right? And that, you know, if you're an old dog like me, that's got to give you pause. You got to be like, oh, okay. The first round of warning signs, yeah? Or a false alarm, which it's probably a false alarm, but what are you going to do? Uh, there you saw me sitting on the floor for a little minute while I was just rambling. I sneak in weird little meditations here and there. I like to just plop down on the floor, find my breath, maybe do some breath holds even, and just run a system diagnostic, crown of the head to my seat, muladhara, you know? And just make sure like I'm not masking anything. You know, sometimes in weightlifting you get a little adrenaline, a little excitement. You start feeling the weight and you start feeling like you're one with it, you know? And I find it's important to sit down and take an honest look at the body. Just go to your breath and run a diagnostic. Um, results vary. That might not be something you need to do. Uh, it's, it's definitely something I benefit from though. So these are actually looking okay. Yeah, I'm pitched a little too far forward, but that's a reoccurring theme for me. I, I likely will never not be, you know? So what are you going to do? Um, maybe that's it for today. Yeah. All right, this is Joe in real life. I love you guys. Be good to each other out there. I'll talk to you tomorrow.